Hello and welcome to this lecture in chemical thermodynamics at UQ. Today's lecture is looking at energy and work. And at the end of this video, you will be able to identify all the components of energy, identify the components of internal energy, define work and the different types of work, and describe where enthalpy came from. So why did we define what enthalpy is? And so what we start with is the energy balance. So, so for a system that we define, the, the energy of the system changes depending on the energy flow in and the energy flow out. So for the system, what are the components of energy? Well, the energy is comprised of the internal energy of the system, the kinetic energy of the system, and the potential energy of the system. The kinetic energy comes from uh, any movement whatsoever. So if your, if your system is moving, it has a kinetic energy. And so the familiar equation there uh, for kinetic energy should ring some bells. The, it's not just the system that can have a kinetic energy, but also anything coming into the system and anything leaving the system can have a kinetic energy as well. Okay, so, so kinetic energy can be both for the system and things going in and out of the system. Potential energy, anything that is in a field has potential energy. Okay, so, so this could be a potential field, okay? So, so something like gravity or a magnetic field. So, so gravity is the most common field for, for engineers to, to deal with. Um, and so a common expression might be uh, MGH, okay? So the mass times by the height times by the gravitational acceleration. Again, the system can have a potential energy, okay? So where your system sits, but also what comes into your system and what goes out of your system can have a potential energy as well. So the difference between uh, water that comes into a dam and water that leaves a dam at the bottom of the dam. Now, what is the internal energy? So the internal energy is made up of the molecular kinetic energy. So this can either be the translation of particles, so all particles translate, so move from one spot to another. If your molecule has multiple atoms in it, then it has other stuff that it can do as well. So the molecule can rotate, and also the molecule can stretch. So all these things are, are different ways that the um, that the molecule can express its kinetic energy. The third is if your molecule not only has multiple atoms, but also has a bend in it, then that rotation and bending adds to the kinetic energy as well. So, so the very simplest molecules have translations, so like noble gases and that sort of thing. And then as you add complexity to the molecules, there are more ways for the molecule to move. The other part of the internal energy is the molecular potential energy. Okay, so this is completely different to the potential energy we were talking about before, where if you move relative to a field, you get potential energy. So molecules are under the influence of all the molecules around them. Okay, so, so the interaction with the molecules around them is the intermolecular interaction. The other type of uh, internal energy is what's contained within the chemical bonds. Okay, so, so that's holding the energy that we see when we get an exothermic or an endothermic reaction. Okay, so, so all these things add up to the internal energy of uh, some compound. So when, when we use these things or for the system, we need to, to add some other things in, okay? So, so we've got our energy flowing in, our energy flowing out with 
something physically coming into the system and something physically leaving the system. So normally for chemical engineers, something flowing in and something flowing out. And then we can have some heat coming into the system. And then we can also have some work leave the system as well. Okay. And so if we take these things into account, then we can see that the energy in minus the energy out now becomes the flow energy in the flow energy out plus the heat in minus the work done on the um, on the surroundings okay that's why the work has a negative sign on it that's just a historical convention now some important information on the previous slide is that uh, throughout this course I'm going to be using a line underneath something to uh, designate if it's a per mole property okay so so for energy it's a joules per mole uh, later on you'll see sometimes that I'll use a little hat okay so this is to to signify a per unit mass measurement okay so joules per kilogram in the case of energy so um, so I'll use either of these uh, depending on what's going on okay and so and here are the balance equations in uh, per mole basis and also per mass basis. So, so what's the work that we need to look at when we're looking at the energy balance of a system? Well, there are three types of work we need to consider. The first is shaft work. So this is something that happens without the volume of your system changing. And it manifests itself in something that you can see happening external to your system. So a, a turbine, for instance, will rotate a shaft and then that shaft will be connected to uh, an electricity generator or a pump or something like that. But we, could, we can actually see the work happening. Okay, and so, so shaft work happens for a fixed volume system and it happens in a way that you can see it change something outside your system. Boundary work is caused when the volume of your system changes. So the, the classic example of this is for when a, a, a piston changes. So when, when your volume changes, you have to push against the pressure that's outside of your system. And so the equations here are just putting that together that says, well, the amount of work that I need to do to change the volume is the change in volume versus the pressure that I have to push against. The final type of work is, is probably the hardest one to, to immediately get a handle on, but it's very important. And that's the work that's required for, uh, for fluid flow into and out of your system. Okay, so, so your fluid has to do work to push its way into the system and then it has to do work to push its way out of the system. And so the equations here are just uh, putting that into, uh, into mathematical notation, okay? That the, the flow in is the volumetric flow in and if we multiply that by the pressure that the flow has to overcome to get into the system, that gives us the work being done on the system. And then the flip side of that, we can look at the volumetric flow out multiplied by the pressure uh, at the exit, and that gives us the work done by the system on the surroundings. So we need to take these two terms into account as well. Now, when we put all this together, we get a, a really ugly looking equation but uh, we're getting closer to the to the finished product we can rearrange this a bit so so what i can do is move my uh, pressure volume terms up with my other uh, energy terms so my internal energy my kinetic energy and i i'll use that to do a simplification on the next slide the simplification i'm going to make is actually to define a new property and that new property is the enthalpy. 
So the enthalpy is just the internal energy plus the pressure times by the volume. Now, this has been uh, invented just because this combination of variables comes up very, very often. And so for a lot of problems, it's much easier to solve it in terms of enthalpy than internal energy plus pressure times by volume. So we're saving ourselves some time and some effort in doing that. So I've substituted that in here, and so we get a, a simplified equation again. But this is still a very complete equation. So this energy balance equation can be used to solve any energy balance problem. There are no assumptions sitting inside this equation. Now, an assumption that we're going to make a lot in this course uh, is that the kinetic energy and the potential energy don't make important contributions. Okay. Now, this is almost all, this is very close to being true uh, for cases particularly where you've got uh, reactions happening. Okay, so, so the energy released in a reaction system tends to be far greater than the energy involved in the change of velocities of fluids and the change in the potential energy of fluids. Where that breaks down is if you have very uh, high velocity flows. Okay? In those cases, the flow, uh, the velocities can be important, and also in cases where you don't have a reaction happening. So if you've got uh, pressure changes across a valve and stuff like that, then sometimes the kinetic energy can be very important. Okay, so to recap on what we've covered in this video, energy is made up of kinetic, potential, and internal energy. The energy balance needs to account for heat, work, and the flow of stuff coming into and out of your system that's going to contain all those different types of energy. Work can be shaft work, work from a volume change, or work from stuff flowing into and out of your system. An enthalpy is a quantity that's been made up to account for the internal energy and the flow work together, just to make our life simpler. Okay, thank you for your attention on this video.